Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to put together the Veritas Compact Router Table from Lee Valley. I'm really looking forward to this. It's a very small tabletop router table specifically designed for trim, compact, palm routers, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to be using the DCW600B from DeWalt, so the cordless 20 volt router, which is one of my favorite tools that I had started to use last year. I've got a few videos that I'll link above and in the description below for this specific router, but I absolutely love it. The portability of being cordless is amazing. And having this small little router table that is 15 and a half inches wide, but I think 11 and a half inches deep is going to be really versatile for some of the smaller projects that I work on. The router table itself comes in these three packages. So we've got the top, we've got the base, and we have the fence. You can purchase these individually or as a kit. And it does also require the purchasing of a base plate for your specific model of router. So while I'm using the DeWalt router in this case, they do have base plates ready to go for a handful of other routers, as well as I believe a blank template as well. So if you have a more obscure brand of router, you can cut the holes to fit yours. So without further ado, let's take a look at the pieces and get it together. So as I mentioned, the three items shown here are sold either as a package, which is $139 US or $158 Canadian, but each of these three pieces can be purchased individually as well. So if you just want the top and the base, you can do so. If you want the fence or don't need the fence, then you don't need to purchase that. So you do get a pretty decent savings when buying them as a package. And now let's get started by opening up the base and putting that together. Okay, so taking a look inside the box, we've got some of the typical Veritas printed accessories. Looks pretty straightforward, just using some cross dowels and some bolts to attach the sides. And then we've got French as well. So yeah, just two pages of instructions, so very easy to use. And you can see here that there is kind of a couple of different options to secure the router table to your workbench. Oh wow, so yeah, this is the first time I've taken a look in here. Nice Baltic birch plywood. A lot of plies in there, so pretty good quality. A little cable holder with Veritas Canada printed on it. Let's take all these pieces out. Then we also have our little hardware kit. Excellent. Okay, so it's definitely smaller than I was expecting. So I'm wondering how it's going to work with the compact rotor with a battery installed. I'm definitely a little concerned on that already. And was something I was a little concerned about when I purchased this, but I also thought that I could just kind of shim it up a little bit on the workbench uh, if I only need kind of an extra inch with that. Okay, so let's open up the accessory package. Okay, really nice quality hardware from Lee Valley, as you would expect. Also comes with the hex wrench for these, so that's always nice. Yeah, very nicely done on these. A little bit of tear out on some of the holes, but generally not too bad. Although you could probably make this uh, a lot cheaper in your own shops. And I think that there are some plans out there for those that want to do that. Yeah, let's start by piecing it together. Okay, just as easy as putting in the little cross dowels, then lining it up the outer part, getting the bolt through. Feels like I'm putting together higher end IKEA furniture. Okay, so something to note that I just ran into is that a couple of the bolts are actually longer than the others. So I tried to put the longer ones in and ran out of room. Not a big deal. Okay, now let's get on the other side. Okay, we got our little table. And you know what, with the tabletop and knowing that the router is going to be mounting pretty close to flush with that, I think that we will be okay with probably a three amp hour battery on this, but probably not the five amp hour that I generally use with the cordless router. 
So just one last piece to put on. These are neat little push pin gizmos that are threaded. Haven't seen those before. Push those on the inside. Then we put the spacers. And we can secure those. So it's actually kind of funny that I'm attaching the cable tie when I use a cordless trim router. So I actually don't need that, but it looks nice and can act as a handle. Okay, so we've got our base together now. We still have a few pieces remaining for when we secure the top, the tabletop to the base. So let's do that next. Okay, so here we've got the top. go. Let's get the little hardware package. Okay, so the hardware package with this is a little more basic. We've got a couple more hex wrenches. We've got a couple of screws that uh, are meant to hold the base plate into the top itself. And we also have the starter pin. So that's handy to have. Wasn't expecting that with this kit. And some of the other hardware is already installed on here. So actually, this is a really nice laminate surface. Very happy with that. Also happy that the fence has these holes. The Bosch rotor table that I'll be showing in just a moment doesn't have these, and it's a pain to remove the fence every time. And looking at the bottom, so you'll see that the leveling screws are already in there. And then we also have the two spots for the, um, for the plate to be mounted permanently inside the table. Nice handle at the top too. So very happy with the build quality of this overall. Uh, if you are looking to get one of these, I would say the top is so far worth it. The base, I'm a little unsure of right now. It, I think it'll be great, but as far as saving a bit of money, you could probably just go with the top. So anyways, let's, uh, let's get it mounted to the top. Actually, before we get this mounted, I just wanna see how the Veritas compact rotor table top compares to the Bosch RA1181. So it's definitely a larger rotor table, but let's see. So position it right in the corner. Yeah, you can see the size. So the surface area is, it's probably like a third of the surface area of the RA1181, which again is a larger rotor table. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good compliment. I do really like this rotor table and having it mounted inside my rigid table saw has been one of the best decisions I've made in my small shop. I'll link to a video above on how I did that. Yeah, nice little compact top compared to this, which is gonna be perfect for the trim rotor. Okay, so to mount the top, it's just as easy as putting in the four bolts and we're gonna be using the exact same little cross dowels and secure them with the provided hardware, the hardware that was provided with the base that is. So if you are mounting this to your own base, you will need to have your own hardware for that. Okay, so we've got the top installed. See from below, got access to the leveling screws. A couple of them were a little hard to get in, but once it kind of squared up with the base, then they went in a little easier. Yeah, really quite sturdy. And my workbench is not perfectly flat by any means, but pretty happy with the structure of this. Just to see kind of loosely how the rotor will go. We will be removing the base plate from this rotor and putting the new one on it. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's uh, get the fence on and then we'll probably take the fence off just to put in the base plate. But might as well finish the setup of the router table itself. And another little hardware package. A couple of knobbies, a couple of T-bolts, screws, 
and washers. We also have the see-through um, guard. They call it the safety shield. I remember the first few times when I ha had some acrylic and was terrified that it was blue and couldn't actually see through it. This one's really rough cut, but it seems like the edges are fine. It's just the blue coating that will peel off that. Uh, it's quite nasty. So let's peel this off and see how clear it is. There we go. Yep, no, that's perfect. Okay, and the fence itself is, I think it's 14 inches long with the metal. And then we also have the seven and a half inch sacrificial pieces, which is the same material as the tabletop, really nice quality birch plywood. And again, kind of that, that laminate finish. So it's kind of nice that they're already on there with just little T-bolts. Let's take these off. Let's take a look at the extrusion itself. A lot of options for accessories, so really quite happy with that. Let's just check the manual and see what size they say these slots are. Doesn't say specifically, but um, yeah, let's grab a tape measure and see. Yeah, so they're half inch slots. Yeah, pretty happy with those overall. Not a bad little setup. So let's look at the manual. Okay, so let's first of all get the safety shield on. So, it's very cold here in Southern Ontario right now, so my hands are quite frozen. So let's just slide this top on. There we go. And we'll just use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten them down. And let's put these fences, the sacrificial fences back on. I'm just gonna tighten these down just for easy mounting. Okay, okay so now we're ready to mount the fence to this. So just as easy as putting the T-bolt through the bottom, putting a washer there and screwing down the little wing, the, the knob. <laughs> so yeah, just really easy mechanism just to slide this along. And it does does allow you to pull out the fence without removing the knobs and the T-nuts. So very, very thankful for that. That's one of the oversights on the Bosch router table that I really don't like. Okay, well in the meantime, now that we're all set with the router table itself. So if you just want to see how to put this together, you're essentially done. Uh, so now we're gonna get the base plate onto the DeWalt router and then we will get that mounted in here. Okay, so we, here we have the Veritas acrylic base plate. So this is for the DeWalt DWP611 or the Porter Cable 450. So you can buy the base plate for your specific router from Veritas or get the blank. Now the DCW600B that I am using, the cordless router is essentially universally compatible with any of the accessories for the DWP611. So that goes for things like the plunge base, that I really love with this router and a handful of other kind of dust collection accessories. So I do find that generally this cordless trim router, while it's not called out by accessory manufacturers as being compatible, I have always found it to be. So let's see if this base plate is compatible with it as well. <laughs> let's hope. Okay, let's see the instructions for the base plate. Yeah, so just removing the sub base from your own router. And yeah, there are a couple of really cool things 
with the Veritas base plates for compact trim rotors where they actually have a whole set of guide bushings that are compatible with these. So I'm really eager to try those out. And they also have little knobs that can be attached to the base plate to give you a larger surface area when it comes to working with that rotor. So if you look here, it can essentially almost double the size of the base on the DeWalt router. So those little knobs are something that I do want to give a bit of a shot because I do use this router all the time. And sometimes it's a little clunky to pull out the plunge base if you really don't actually need to plunge. So removing the base plate is easy. Almost any third party base plate for your router will be using the exact same screws that already came with your router. So as you remove those, don't expect to have received screws with the third party base plate. Okay, so we got that base plate off and the new one is ready to go on, but let's remove that blue shielding on this. Really difficult to get started on this. Very nice finish on this. Okay, there we go. Probably the hardest part of this entire setup. Yeah, so really nice finish. Does have Veritas embossed on there. And let's get this mounted. So I want to be able to have easy access to probably the clasp. So we're going to, uh, maybe the battery. No, the battery can be accessible from the back. So I'm going to want to mount it, I pull the table. So this is going to be essentially mounted this way in there. So I'm going to position it like this so I can have easy access to this clasp on the rotor. You may want to do it differently depending on your router or just kind of how you like, what you like to have access to. And using the same screws that came with the DeWalt rotor, we're going to attach this base plate. There, so we got the base on. That's really nice. Really quite happy with that. So now let's remove the table over. Let's remove the fence. Let's just test this. Let's just throw the rotor itself in and kind of see how much space there's gonna be at the bottom. Oh gosh, there's gonna be lots of room for, um, a large battery on that. So my concerns from the beginning are not founded. <laughs> wow, that just like out of the box, that fit is really quite nice. Very happy with that. But let's uh, get out the straight edge and probably a little 90 degree and we will level this perfectly. Okay, so we got a couple of tools. Wow, that's super close. See a little bit over there. So I'm gonna lower that one, but then let's check. They did a really good job leveling this out of the factory. So I think it's probably just one screw over here that I have to modify. And to do that, we're gonna be going back to the tools that came with the base. Just a tiny turn. That is perfect. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a router table out of the, the three or four that I've owned even come remotely close to that. But what I'm really curious to test right now is the battery and how this fits. So I got two different sizes here. So we've got the five amp hour XR. Uh, so this is the battery that I generally like to use on this router because it gives me probably about an hour of runtime uh, pretty easily. And then we also have these little 1.3 amp hour batteries, which I know will fit in this, but um, they definitely don't last that long. So essentially a quarter of the time. So let's put this on and let's see if, first of all, if this, yeah, it doesn't fit into the table. So there's no way to actually fit 
it in with the battery on, but if we put the router in and let's secure it. So we have those two screws that are left from the top. Just to make sure that the router itself does not pop out as we fiddle around with it. And we'll be giving the router table a test in just a few minutes as well. And I do have a couple of concerns about this router table that I'll be sharing at that time. Number one is uh, related to dust collection and the lack thereof in there kind of being any sort of dust collection compatibility for this. There'd be no way to use like the Oneida, which uh, I love, um, but there's no way that it would fit under here. And the fence itself, it does have this little hole. So I'm thinking about trying to fit something together that can go into these T-slots to hold my Festool dust extractor. So I think that there is gonna be a little bit of an option with that, which should work really well, given the amount of material that you'd be taking off with a trim router. So there we go. So we've got the router mounted, really solid. Really, really happy with that. And let's turn it around. And just to show you, if you are using a cordless router, having this position at the back so that you can just simply insert the battery this way is probably the way to go. There we go. And let's see if it fits. It does. Wow. <laughs> so just pulling out the secondary camera. Just look at how close that five amp hour battery pack is with this rotor. So just fits, but that's um, more than fine for my needs. Okay, so really quite happy with how that fits. And if you're using a corded trim router, you're gonna have no issue whatsoever. It'll probably also make the entire system a bit lighter and you'll actually be able to make use of the cable wrap on the back. So the only other thing that I wanna show before we get this thing going is the starter pin. And for those of us that work on smaller pieces, starter pins can be absolutely amazing. And to use this, you just remove one of these screws that mounted the router into the table. And you generally mount the starter pin on the right side. And we can just put that in. So this is actually going to secure, keep the router secured as well. And oh yeah, it's, you can tighten it up. And there you go. So then when you're working with your workpiece, and let me grab one. So with the starter pin, when you're working with your work piece and you just want a little bit of a pivot, so just something to kind of hold it against, just to get a really gentle movement. Um, they usually work really, really well. So yeah, happy that it had one. I did not realize that it was coming with one. So I think now that we've got this all together and let's just put the screw back in, I think the only thing that we have left to do is actually try it out. So I'm gonna get the fence back on and I'm gonna grab a couple scrap pieces of wood and we will give this little router table a shot. Okay, so before we put the fence back on, I'm gonna just remove the battery and we're gonna install the bit. And this was one of the other things that I was a little concerned about. There we go. As far as being able to access that, uh, but it's kind of funny that I actually thought that because I can essentially just take the motor out. So basically just install the bit the way that I always do. Take the motor out. Lock it into place. What I've also realized is that since I have the plunge base, I can probably leave this in here most of the time. So that's set up for a pretty aggressive cut. So let's bring it back down a little bit. And as I mentioned, they do have bushings that can go in here. There is a pretty decent space or gap between, let's see if it'll come into focus. There is a pretty decent gap between the bit and the plate. So I wish that there was a little bit of an insert that could go in there. Maybe there is, so I'll have to explore that a little bit. But so far, so good. So we're now going to put the fence on. I have removed this, the pivot pin and we're gonna put the battery on and we're gonna give this a shot. And yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna set it up to route a groove. 
does make sense that it has these screws on the front instead of on a larger router table having little chunky things on the back, little knobs on the back, because uh, there's not space on such a small fence. I'm just tightening this up a little bit. And my dust collection fears, I think, are mostly gone. Just knowing that there is the gap on the back of the fence. And knowing with the T-slots here, it wouldn't be that difficult to fashion some fashion something. And again, the amount of material that's being removed by a trim router is going to be minimal. And the power of something like a dust extractor or really any kind of shop vac will be pretty significant. So um, pretty happy to find that out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some clamps so we can clamp this bad boy to the table. Got a sample workpiece, just some birch plywood. We'll get the battery in and then we'll give this thing a shot. Wow, even just one clamp holds up really well. Two holds it even better. Get the battery in. Funny thing. So, because I have the longer bit in the router and I have it pulled down, the five amp hour battery is not gonna fit. So before I had had the router motor essentially towards the top of the base. So yeah, of course it fit, but it's not fitting right now. It's pretty close, so a three amp hour battery should fit in there. But I'm gonna have to go to the 1.3 amp hour in this case, which has more than enough room. It's just that it's not gonna have as long of a runtime. So. Not great, but also it wouldn't be that big of a deal to just put another couple little pieces of half inch plywood under here and still clamp it down and then be able to have access for that five amp hour battery. So yeah, kind of a funny thing, but it's all good. Got my safety equipment on. So I think that about does it for my first video on the Veritas compact rotor table. I'm really happy with it. I, I think that this was a very worthwhile purchase for me. It extends the versatility of my cordless trim rotor quite handily. And for those that have wired trim routers or don't yet have a trim router, just know that the issues that I ran into with the size of the battery is very unique to this router specifically, given how long it is. And it's something that could easily be overcome by shimming the bottom or just by using a smaller battery pack. So the dust collection is kind of that next step for me to address on this to make sure that I can get a pretty good dust collection system set up with it, which I am pretty confident won't be too difficult to do with this rotor table. And I'm really just happy with the portability. I do love my Bosch RA1181 rotor table for larger work pieces, but the reality is that most of my woodworking right now outside of some of the cabinet work that I do is uh, going to take advantage of the small router table. I love, 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 love my DeWalt DCW600B router. And if you haven't already watched my review on it, definitely check it out. I think that it is a phenomenal addition to any woodworking shop, especially if you are working on smaller work pieces. Yeah, I think that about does it for this video. So thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you would like to. Subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for some more videos. I'll probably do a couple more on this router table as, as I learn more about it. And I also want to show uh, how you can even extend the versatility of your trim router even more using some of the tools and accessories from Veritas. Thanks for watching.